neuroprotection is something that I think we need to start paying attention to more. Okay, neuroprotection is where you're not necessarily boosting cognitive function, you're trying to do things that protect your brain from damage, right? And something that I've talked about on this channel before is the interesting effects of pomegranates, because pomegranates have some pretty powerful polyphenols in them. Now, there's some nuancey stuff because these polyphenols actually have to get acted upon by our bacteria uh, to form what is called a postbiotic, but that's kind of a story for a different day, so we'll talk about that another time. This video is really focused on the effects of pomegranate juice in sort of a concentrated form in terms of neuroprotection. So we'll break down how this all works. So let's go ahead and dive in. After today's video, I want you to check out a company called Timeline Nutrition. Okay, Timeline Nutrition is the global leader in what is called Urolithin A research. Urolithin A is a derivative, which not really a derivative, it's a compound that comes from the polyphenols in pomegranates after the bacteria acts upon it. But they have a really interesting technology called MitoCure that allows the Urolithin A to be taken in oral form to potentially improve uh, mitophagy when there's a lot of research to back it up. So if you're looking for something that can help you out with sort of restoring your body's natural power grid and kind of upgrading the power grid, they are definitely the one to check out. My experience with Timeline specifically has been more like mental acuity. I feel it a lot in my brain, but another thing that I kind of noticed is I just feel like I have a little bit more energy, especially in the gym, especially early in the morning. Now that all has to do with the potential mitophagy, sort of that mitochondrial biogenesis that mitochondrial form of autophagy. So really interesting compound. So that link down below is timelinenutrition.com slash Thomas. Okay, timelinenutrition.com slash Thomas and then use code Thomas for 10% off. So that link is down below. So there's a study that was published in the International Journal of Molecular Sciences. Now it was a rodent model study, but it was very intriguing because what they did is they gave rats that had Parkinson's disease, they gave them pomegranate juice. Okay, and what they found is that the pomegranate juice ended up doing a few different things. For one, they did find the pomegranate juice resulted in urolithin A levels being elevated in the brain. What does that mean? Well, urolithin A, like I mentioned in that pre-roll for timeline, urolithin A is a postbiotic. It is a component of pomegranate polyphenols that gets extracted when our bacteria acts upon the polyphenols. So basically, if you ate a pomegranate and I ate a pomegranate, we would have entirely different results in terms of who gets urolithin A out of it, because it all has to do with our bacteria. But what's interesting about this particular study is that it found that urolithin A does go into the brain, and this could be providing a neuroprotective effect. So pomegranate juice could have this effect if you're one of the ones that synthesizes the urolithin A or creates the urolithin A properly. But outside of that, they found that there was neuroprotection from the pomegranate juice when it came down to protecting from the reactive oxygen species within the brain. So as we get older, our mitochondria gets acted upon by reactive oxygen species, by oxidative damage, and it starts breaking down and kind of destroying the mitochondria in a certain way. And what happens is the mitochondrial DNA becomes damaged, but additionally, as the mitochondria becomes more dysfunctional, it leaks mitochondrial like DNA. And when this mitochondrial DNA leaks out, what happens is the immune system kind of has to scavenge it because it's, it's signaling an abnormality. And that's what the immune system does, is it's always looking for abnormalities. And it notices that mitochondrial DNA is in the bloodstream when it shouldn't be there. So the T cells, the B cells, they, they see that, they recognize it, and they try to source where the damage is coming from. In an effort to do that, they find the damage, and then what do they do? Well, they elevate inflammatory responses, and that's how you have inflammation, chronic inflammation, that is associated with aging. I've talked about this a million times, it's called inflammaging, okay? So this can potentially happen within our brain too, because our brain has a lot of mitochondria in it, right? So we're creating, a, we're using a lot of energy in our brain. Our brain, even though it's only 2% of our body weight, ends up being 20% of our overall energy demand for our body. That just shows you the concentration of energy that's going there. So the amount of mitochondrial DNA that gets damaged in the brain as we get older could be extraordinarily high. So if we can potentially protect it with small amounts of pomegranate juice and this potential urolithin A, that is a very big thing. They also found that there was a decrease in what's called alpha-synuclein aggregation. What this means is uh, alpha-synuclein is kind of like a, a buildup that ends up blocking 
a synapse. Now a synapse, I've talked about this before, is a bridge between neurons, right? That synapse is that gap in between. And you have uh, neurotransmitters that kind of carry things over. Well, imagine with that gap, you have a bunch of gunk, a bunch of cars that were driving over that and they got stuck. So now you can't really transmit, right? Because there's a blockage in the intersection. So when you have a reduction of this, like we saw in this study, again, it's a rodent model, but it's still interesting. It's very fascinating. You can see how that could have a potential neuroprotective effect. The other thing, and the thing that I find the most fascinating, is there is a reduction in what's called alpha dehydrogenase within the brain. Let me paint a picture for you. If you consume some alcohol, okay, you had a bunch of liquor or something, that alcohol, that ethanol, is going to get broken down by the saliva and it's gonna ultimately turn into what's called acetaldehyde. Sound familiar? Aldehyde dehydrogenase? That aldehyde dehydrogenase plays a role in the liver of breaking down that acetaldehyde. That's just one example, okay? So if we have an increase in aldehyde dehydrogenase in the brain, that means our ability to break down toxic compounds that are larger molecules increases. You can see how that's a neuroprotective effect, right? If, again, I hate the word toxin because it's thrown around so much, but if you have toxic compounds that are getting into your brain, as they sometimes do, and you have neuroprotection because you have an increase in this enzyme that can break them down, that enzyme then breaks them down into carboxylase, okay? Carboxylase can then be metabolized by muscles, it can be metabolized by other tissues. In other words, carboxylase is easy to deal with. Some other bigger compounds are not. And if you're deficient or low in aldehyde dehydrogenase, you can't deal with those compounds. So this is probably the most fascinating piece because it doesn't necessarily have to do with longevity or any of that. It just has to do with the polyphenols that are associated with pomegranate, not even necessarily the urolithin A, which is the longevity component. So very, very fascinating stuff. So overall, we have to look at pomegranates in two different buckets. We have the direct effect of the polyphenols that could have neuroprotective, reactive oxygen species, you know, neutralizing effects. And then we have the urolithin A postbiotic effect, which I have other videos on. That's more the longevity, mitochondrial, biogenesis side of things. So when you're looking at different fruits that have neuroprotective effects, it's all about getting the most bang for the buck. You don't need a copious amount of pomegranate to get the effect. Like you'd put a little bit in your Greek yogurt, you could do something like that and possibly still elicit a benefit. But however, the research is still in the rodent model stages with the neuroprotective effects. So we have to take that with a grain of salt. But this channel is all about bringing newer research to you so you can try different things and be your own N equals one to get the best possible outcome. I'll see you tomorrow.